let's make our wheel. We're going to start off with a circle or an ellipse, whatever you want to call it. We'll just make one, center it, pull it out to the outer diameter of the rim. There we are. And we're going to use the offset tool and make some more inner circles. We're going to make one for the lip and then one for the center cap lug area. And we are going to draw a line for the spoke. We're going to draw an in interpret curve from the center to the outer diameter. I'm going to use that line later. Now let's select all these curves and move them out. Just line it up with your wheel. And now I'm using the mirror tool from the center, just the mirror spokes, and they obviously look a little bit too thin. So I'm move it out a little bit. Mirror it again, that looks a little bit better. And now we're going to use the rotate of the copy option. Just click copy and turn it to yes. We're going to center it from the center and using basic geometry. Type in, you know, intervals of 72 to get a five spoke rim. You know, if you want to do um, a six spoke rim, it'll be 60%. Or there's another tool you can use a ray polar, and I'll probably go over that in another tutorial. But for this one, I used the copy rotate tool. Now let's go to that other curve we made earlier. And you want to turn the control points on to edit it. And uh, this is going to define the concavity of the actual spokes. You know, you want to have some concavity or, you know, some kind of geometry to it. Because a flat spoke, it's generally not a good looking wheel. And once you're finished, just pick the curve and we're going to use the revolve tool pick the center of rotation and we're going to revolve it on this axis over here and we have the beginning surface to work with right now I'm selecting all, the cur all of the curves for the spoke and I am going to project it to the C-plane, to zero plane, basically, so I can clean up the area for the surface of the rim. That way, when you look in perspective area, you know, it's not a whole bunch of overlapping lines. Right now, I'm using the trim tool, and I'm just trimming the overlap, the inner sections, you know, just clean it up a little bit. You just click the access stuff once you selected it all, and it Rhino should be able to understand what you're trying to do and they'll trim the, the excess stuff. You don't have to do that, but what I did, I think I either hit it or just deleted it, the surface, and I revolved it again. Um, I don't know why, so you don't have to do that, but, you know, just get that surface back. And uh, right here, I messed up on the revolve because I did it on the wrong axis, as you can see. So let's get it straight. And right now, I'm trying to select all the center lines with the center cap. Because we're going to delete them, you don't need it. We're going to use the fillet edge. Some people call it fillet, I call it fillet. I like it better that way, it sounds better to me. Easier to say. And uh, we're just going to fillet in between the edges, as you can see. And right now I'm using the split tool. I pick the surface and then I, cl I type split or click it. And then I pick the curves to use the split, and we are slicing into the surface. And we have the spokes with some concavity. 
and now I'm using the offset tool to make the lip and then I'm going to split it again I'm just hiding the ISO curve so it cleans up the surface so I can, I can tell what's going on I'm doing another offset and this time I'm making a curve closer to the inside for the center cap area we're going to split it again just to cut it out because obviously you don't want that inner vertex area alright now we're going to offset one of the inner spokes I'm going to be using offset a lot I'm just showing the control points I was going to rotate it but I decided to do it a different way so we're going to draw a line from the center and then we're going to trim it cut it off just for one side and then we're going to rotate it to give it a more uh, I guess wedge shape so it's not as uniform or uh, parallel make a little bit more interesting and once you have that uh, that wedge shape from the rotation go ahead and mirror it and I tried to fillet it to fill in the gap but that didn't work so you can always use blend just type blend and pick both ends of the surface and it should be connected and then join them all and rebuild it to one singular surface I, I picked 32 points as that's a decent number and then I trimmed the intersections to clean it up just to make that shape right there and then I moved it back so that you know you can give it again some more three dimensionality to it some depth to it and then I used the loft tool loft it's a pretty good surface to it likes somewhat parallel surfaces if the surfaces are not parallel and they're perpendicular you can have some funny surfaces so try to make it parallel and it worked for this instant and now again I'm using the rotate and copy tool 72 degrees again you can use a ray polar from the center if you want And then I move the outside lip about, I guess, an inch out. You know, again, the measurements doesn't really matter. It's all about proportion here because I'm not going for complete accuracy. And right now I'm joining all the surfaces. And I'm going to extrude some curves for the inner center cap area. And just pick, pick a random thickness join that curve so it's all one poly surface and then we're going to fillet the whole poly surface because there's no such thing as a sharp edge in real life you know everything has a curve to it or a smoothing to it in real life but obviously you can get away with that in uh, the digital realm but it just doesn't look right that's one key thing that helps makes things you know look realer or I guess in a sense and uh, as you can see I messed up I I didn't join one of the surfaces so it couldn't lay one edge so I just control Z undo and uh, rejoin that surface again that I, I forgot to join So let's get it all together and then refillet it.
make the center cap and I'm just using a series of offsets and moving them to give them some depth and dimension it's pretty redundant but if you just look do something similar to this and I do this uh, just so like I said this is going to be a simple wheel modeling tutorial so I'm not going to go deep into the uh, you know drawing the lug holes and all of that this is you know purely just for surfaces and appearance patch is what I'm using right here the patch tool is quite nice in Rhino it, it's, it usually likes simpler planes but you can try to patch you know complex surfaces sometimes you'll get it it just depends what you're going for but it wouldn't be I wouldn't suggest it for really complex surfaces and now I'm just filleting the edges to smooth things out changing the radius for some of them a center cap cover and then we're just going to move it inwards to cover up the lug, lug holes or the supposed lug holes we pretty much have the face of a rim now and right now I'm just applying the material to it you know I made one called rims it's kind of like a, a polished aluminum look to it and then I selected all the curves and hit them just to clean it up so that we can you can work with this. All you gotta do is click all, hold it, and select curves, and then click hide, and now hide it. Now I'm going to extrude the curve. I'm going to pick the inner diameter to make the lip, the barrel of the rim. Extrude it out, decide the thickness, and then we have the barrel. Here I'm using the copy tool to copy that surface to the other end to finish it up. And then we're going to join those three surfaces we just made and it's going to be a poly surface and then we're going to fillet this edge. Again the fillet is too big. Control Z and change, you know, the radius to get it to your liking. All right, and you can fillet the back end if you want. I, pr I didn't because again, this is just for rendering purposes. You're not going to see the back side, so. Now we're making the actual tire, very simple tire. I just drew a rectangle basically and we're gonna fillet the curve to give it that roundness that the tire has on the edge and just pick again the radius that, that you think looks good. Alright, and then we're gonna use Revolve again. I'm going to pick that single curve in the center of the actual wheel. And we're just going to revolve it on the same axis as the rim. Nice and simple. And there we have it. I'm just going to change the material so that you can have some color to it. You know, you want the tire to be black and all of that. And then that's it. That's the tutorial. I hope it helped you. These are all open surfaces. They're not closed solids. So, you know, this is just for a very simple wheel to get you started. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for looking.